the fourth ratio in our category of solvency ratio interest coverage ratio it's a new ratio introduced in your syllabus it's important now the formula is earnings before interest and tax upon interest on long term debt now earning earning before interest and tax it's also known as ebitda a beta e b i t a ebitda earning before interest and tax find karna hai so you will be given earning after tax usme hum add kar denge tax aur usme hum add kar denge interest to tumhe milega earning before interest and tax no see owner and business owner gives money to the business shareholders give invest money but they don't get any interest what they get is a share in profit but business also borrows from outsiders now yahan pe they have to pay fixed percentage of interest so here with this ratio we are going to see the capacity of the business to repay this interest on long term borrowing तो इंटरेस्ट पे कहां से करें हमारा प्रॉफिट सही करेंगे तो प्रॉफिट बिफोर इंटरेस्ट एंड टैक्स जो है वो फाइंड करेंगे अपॉन इंटरेस्ट ऑन लॉन्ग टर्म डेट जितना रेशियो ज्यादा यानी जितना ये कम उतना इट इज बेटर फॉर द बिजनेस द बिजनेस इज इन अ पोजीशन और इट्स प्रॉफिटेबल इनफ टू पे द इंटरेस्ट अंडरस्टूड दिस ओके question 14 page number 248 from the following information of k company limited calcu calculate interest coverage ratio now profit after tax is given tax is paid is given 10% debentures 20 lakh is given and 12% loan 10 lakh is given so we have to calculate kya karna padega from this information we have to calculate the interest on loan term Debts that is interest on debenture and interest on loan, and also we we'll have to calculate earning before interest and tax. First, interest on long term debt. Interest on ten percent debenture, twenty lakh. Into ten percent, two lakh, and twelve percent loan. We assume it's a long-term loan. Ten lakh into twelve percent, one lakh twenty thousand, three lakh twenty thousand total. interest on debt earning before interest and tax is equal to earning after tax or so on 7 lakh 50 thousand plus tax 2 lakh 50 thousand plus interest on debt 3 lakh 20 thousand 13 lakh 20 thousand earning 
before interest and tax. Therefore, interest coverage ratio is 13 lakh 20 thousand upon 3 lakh 20 thousand, which is equal to 4.125. Is expressed in terms of times, number of times. So, to our profit, jo hai, it can be used to pay 4.2125 times the interest. So, jit, jitna ratio zyada, utna better. Jo finally profit aya hai after tax, to wo after interest bhi aya. Because the profit is earning, it will be interest minus, hoga, tax, uske baad hi uske upar tax ke, because interest is our expense. So, we will add We will add away. And what we get is interest before interest and tax. Understood this? Okay. Let's go to the formula page. Very interesting ratios. Now we are going to the which category? Fourth. Fifth, first is profitability. Second was liquidity. Third was solvency. And the fourth is efficiency. Interest coverage ratio was part of the third solvency ratio. Understood this? Now, we go to the last part. That is efficiency or activity ratios. Click the fourth one. Efficiency. Activity ratio. Very interesting. Isme, the first one is stock turnover ratio. What was I missing here? All interesting. To what business concepts develop of this? Stock turnover ratio. Now, which is equal to cost of goods sold upon average stock. Now, cost of goods sold is clearly given in the textbook, so we will follow this. Cost of goods sold is equal to opening stock of raw material plus purchase of raw material plus purchase expense minus closing stock of raw material So what we get is cost of goods consumed plus wages and plus factory expense which is equal to cost of goods sold. Very important. You have to know this format also along with the formula. This is one of the basic formula of cost of goods sold. Second is sales minus gross profit is also equal to cost of goods sold. And can I say sales minus cost of goods sold is equal to gross profit? You remember this also. But what is cost of goods sold? So you have to remember this. Easily if you want to remember, then remember opening stock plus purchase plus purchase expense minus closing. If you look at this, we can write it here too. There is no difference. No, you did not find this cost of goods consumed. Ultimately what you want to find cost of goods sold. Understood this? The basic formula is, see if this is your trading account. 
Although we don't have to write, make this format for your understanding, you have to open it stock, you have to purchase, you have purchase expense, you have sales, you have closing stock. Now what do you Credit minus debit. What you get is gross profit. Now, we use the same concept over here. Opening stock plus purchase plus purchase expense minus closing stock. So this is your cost of goods sold. Understood this? Understood this? So sales misses ko nikal doge to gross profit mil jayega. Cost of goods sold plus gross profit is equal to sales. So you can make various formulas. Like look. See, now, uh, here to ratio, what is, this is known as stock turnover ratio. Now, I go back to the basic of accounts. Started business by bringing cash. Say, for example, 100 cash lab. Example, 100 cash lab. Ye cash ka mene kya buy kiya? Goods. Ye goods mene sell kiya hai 120. Okay, kitna profit ho? 20. Now, ye cycle business, if I do it 100 times, then the money will go back to the doors, then the money will go back to the doors, then the money You understood this? So, if this cycle 20 times, then the profit will be 100. How much profit will be? 2000. Invest how much did you Profit how much did you 2000. You understood? Now, this is known as stock turn over. Kitni baar tum stock ko on an average rotate karte ho business me. Now, have you heard of FMCG, fast moving consumer goods? Pata hai na? Pata hai is one of the example. Hindustan Lever, Beauty Lever, Colgate, Pamol, these are fast moving consumer goods companies. Now, yaha pe hum usko kehte na fast moving, to fada fada dikte. So can I say turnover is very fast? But what about a company selling Ferrari cars in India? Lamborghini car in India, Bugatti in India. Turnover is very less. But then still why they are surviving? They are doing good because profitability is high. And if you have a product, its profitability is low. So, you can see that 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 you can see mobile phones can mobile phones you margin is very less but the turnover is very high can see this is how these ratios are used to analyze agar koi company ka stock turnover bahut hi kam hai aur profitability bhi kam hai to we would like to stay away from that Okay. Page number 248, question number 15. Calculate stock turnover ratio from the following information of L Company Limited. Now, sales, opening stock, closing stock, purchase, and GP is given. Let's find out cost of goods sold and average stock. First, write the ratio. Stock turnover ratio. is equal to cost of goods sold upon average stock. Working note. First, cost of goods sold. Sales. What's the sales? Sales is 30 lakhs minus gross profit 30 percent. 9 lakhs. How much? 21 lakhs. Cost of goods sold. Average stock is equal to opening stock plus closing stock upon 2. All of you know it. 3,50,000 plus 2,50,000. 
This is equal to 3 lakh. Apply it. Cost of goods sold. Three seven. Seven times. Here we will use number of times, not ratio. Question number 16. Calculate stock turnover ratio from the following information of Y Company Limited. Opening stock sales, purchase expense, closing stock purchases, wages. So let's first calculate all these things. Write the formula. Stock turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold upon average stock working note 1 cost of goods sold now wages information is given we will use the information opening stock 2 lakh plus purchases Twenty two lakh plus purchase expense one lakh plus wages separately we include cards up there. Now, Sath may include card because it's just a working wages two lakh fifty thousand total. 27,50,000 Let's Closing stock 1,50,000 26 lakh Cost of goods sold Average stock Is equal to opening stock plus closing stock divide by 2 so 2 lakh plus 1 lakh 50 thousand divide by 2 is 3 lakh 50 so 1 lakh 75 Which is equal to 26 lakh. How much? 857. 14.86. Second of this efficiency ratio is known as working capital turnover ratio which is equal to sales with case where sales is not given we will use cost of goods sold where sales is not given we will use cost of goods sold okay both are different upon working capital do you know what is working capital current asset minus current liability still you write Working capital is equal to current asset minus current liability. Third one, data turnover ratio. Now, debtor turnover is equal to credit sale upon average trade receivable. Now, what is the meaning of trade receivable? Trade receivable are our debtors as well as bill receivable. Understood this? Now, trade receivable. So, average trade receivable is 
is equal to opening trade receivable plus closing trade receivable upon 2. For clarity, I am writing trade receivable. Trade receivable is equal to debtors plus bills receivable. Collection period in first month, which is equal to twelve upon data turn over second weeks. So now we can is equal to 52 weeks upon data turn over and third days now 365 days in a year okay many days in the question it will be given that you take number of days in a year as 360 but if nothing is given we take 365 upon data turn turned over. Now what is this? Months, weeks and days. Now the ratio, debtor turnover ratio says credit sales will be here because debtors and the credit sales are connected. Usme average kitne mere debtors hai? Average is opening plus closing. So ye jitna number of times zyada hai turnover that is बेटर कि हम फटाफट लोगों को क्रेडिट पे बेचते हैं और तुरंत हमारे डेटर्स पे कर देते हैं। The more number of times this turnover is there, it is better for the business. तो यहाँ पे तुम्हें times मिल जाएगा, number of times, five times, ten times, fifteen times. But you also want to find कि on an average मेरे डेटर्स कितने दिन में पैसा देते हैं? कि on an average मेरा एक डेटर forty five days में पैसा देता है। on an average mera data 3 week mein paisa deta hai on an average mera data 3 mahine mein paisa deta hai so now this number of times we express if in months then 12 divided by data turnover if in weeks 52 divided by data turnover if in days 365 divided by data turnover you understood this are you able to visualize this ok now just like we have data turnover ratio can you make the formula for creditor turnover ratio? Similar way. Okay, let's write the fourth formula. Creditor turnover ratio is equal to credit purchase upon average trade payable. Now what are trade tables? Creditors plus bills payable. Okay. Average trade payable is equal to opening trade payable plus closing trade payable upon two. Trade payable is equal to creditors plus bills payable. Payment period, if in months, 12 divided by creditor turnover, if in weeks, then 52 divided by creditor turnover, and if in days, 365 divided by creditors turnover. Question number 17. Calculate working capital turnover ratio based in sales and cost of goods sold from the following information of Z Company Limited. Particulars cost of goods sold. Now over here we have to use based on sales as well as cost of goods sold. So don't know use currently we have to do this formula two times. One on sales and other on cost of 
goods cost of goods sold is given non current asset non current liability kuch bhi karna hai iska gross profit use karenge to find out sales and current asset and current liability so first let's find out first ratio working capital turnover based on cost of goods sold which is equal to cost of goods sold upon working capital working note now cost of goods sold already given we have to find out working capital working capital is equal to current asset Minus current liabilities, which is equal to five lakh minus three lakh, is equal to rupees two lakh. Cost of goods sold thirty-two lakh upon two lakh is equal to sixteen times. Working capital. Turnover ratio based on sales, which is equal to sales upon working capital. Working note one: sales is equal to cost of goods sold plus gross profit, which is equal to thirty-two lakhs. Plus eight lakh forty lakh is equal to forty lakhs upon two lakh is equal to twenty lakhs. Question number eighty. From the following information of B Company Limited, calculate debtor turnover and collection period in days. Now we have to calculate debtor turnover, and we also have to calculate collection period in number of days. What will be the answer in collection period in terms of week and months? Here, three no find करना है. Assume three sixty days of the year. Now first we'll find out debtor turnover ratio. Let's find out debtor turnover is equal to. Credit sale upon average trade receivable. Now in this sum, credit sale is already given three lakh sixty five thousand. Now what we have to find is average trade receivable. So working note, average trade receivable. Working note one is equal to opening debtors plus bill receivable plus closing debtors plus bill receivable all upon two all upon Which is equal to opening debtor seventy thousand plus opening bill receivable twenty thousand plus closing debtors fifty thousand plus closing bill receivable six thousand upon two one lakh forty six. Divide by two, which is equal to seventy-three thousand. Credit sale already given three lakh sixty-five thousand upon seventy-three thousand. Five times. Five times. Okay. Collection period. 
first number of takes is equal to 360 upon delta turnover which is equal to 360 upon 5 which is equal, is equal to 72 takes second in weeks is equal to 52 upon delta turnover which is equal to 52 upon 5 10.4 weeks and third months is equal to 12 upon delta turnover which is equal to 12 upon 5 2.4 months question number 19 from the following information of C company limited calculate creditor turnover and payment period in days what will be the answer if payment period is calculated in terms of weeks and months as you 360 days of the year now particular creditors bills payable bill receivable debtors closing balances are given credit sale credit purchase oh sorry credit sale cash sales total sale total purchase and cash purchase so we will have to find out credit purchase so write the formula 90 pay 249 creditor turnover ratio is equal to credit purchases upon average trade payables working note 1 credit purchase is equal to total purchase minus cash purchase which is equal to 6 lakh minus 2 lakh 40,000 rupees 3 lakh 60,000 second average trade payable is equal to opening creditors plus bills payable plus closing creditors plus bills payable upon 2 which is equal to 45,000 plus 15,000 plus 40,000 plus 60,000 40,000 plus 20,000 upon 2 which is equal to rupees is equal to 60,000 let's use this 3,60,000 upon 60,000 is equal to 6 times payment period first number of days is equal to 360 upon creditor turn o which is equal to 360 by 6 60 days second weeks is equal to 52 upon creditor turn over which is equal to 52 upon 6 how much? 8.67 weeks and third months 12 
which is equal to 12 upon 6 is equal to 2 months.